the clear off the course, and it looks like one of our international teams is standing by at the starting gate. All right, here we go. Timer. Fucking eleven. Get ready. Get set. Go. <laughs> This is one of our newer teams this year, the International Space Education Institute, Team Italy, where part of the buggy was in fact built in Italy, and I believe at least one of the team members is from Italy. Uh, but this, of course, the, the institute itself located in Leipzig, Germany. This is the first year for Team Italy to compete in the NASA Great Moon Buggy Race. All right, able to get over uh, obstacles one and two a little bit of that, a little bit of a slower pace than uh, the international teams usually set, at least the International Space Education Institute teams. All right, hitting the cone but not getting tangled up on it, that is, that is somewhat helpful. One thing you do notice with some of these steering mechanisms is you have to have a firm hand with it. So that your uh, your tires don't go a little too sideways as you're driving. Moving down now, Legacy Row there, or Heritage Heritage Row, where you see a lot of the rockets that were uh, built in the early days of NASA, as well as the later days of the uh, space rocket program for the U.S. Army. Team Italy now is looks like they're caught up once again at obstacle number five. You can hear some of the uh, some of the locals as well as some of the supporters from the team themselves uh, cheering on their team as they were able to get through obstacle number five, approaching obstacle number six, and pushing their way through. Nicely done. And one of the most energetic men that we'll see at these events is uh, Ralph Heckel. He is uh, one of the advisors for the International Space Education Institute and has been so instrumental in, in raising the visibility of the Great Moon Buggy Race overseas, including uh, bringing us high school and college teams from the Institute. Including a, at least two German teams, a Russian team, and an Italian team this year. Unfortunately, Team Italy now also uh, caught up a little bit in obstacle number eight. Doing their best to rock their way out of this. They've done, they've done pretty well so far to, to not incur too many touch penalties. They're able to get over one part of the ridge. Let's see if they can try to rock their way out of the next part. Still stuck on uh, on obstacle number eight over there. 
They decided that's enough time wasted in attempting to rock out of it. They might as well just go ahead and push out. As we approach the five minute mark on Team Italy's run. All right, making that hairpin turn. Moving towards obstacle number nine. Trying to pick up some speed. Oh, hit a little sideways. They realize that uh, that obstacle doesn't have much give on it. There they are with a little, little advice from the judges as they push their way through. Approaching obstacle number 10 now. These are, uh, this is gravel covered uh, corrugated steel. That's what gives them those, uh, those individual ridges. Heading straight towards our cameras now and over the rest of obstacle number 10. And they turn into the lunar crater as we hit the six minute mark. And as Team Italy exits the lunar crater, one of the permanent installations here at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, let's head over to the starting gate for the next team. Another permanent installation here, Bill, UA Huntsville, the local team, the Chargers, here with their buggy. Which buggy is this? This is um, the UAH Moon Buggy exhibit and the Team 3. Team 3, okay. And what's your name? Sarah Smith. Sarah and? Brady Schaefer. Brady, I know you've raced before. Tell us, did you race yesterday? Um, we didn't race yesterday, but I have raced since uh, I was a sophomore in high school. Yeah, I mean, I remember you. So uh, what's it like? What, why are you just now racing today? What happened? Um, the bill, the, actually, working on the buggy, uh, was it took longer than what was projected to because we had presentations to determine who was Team 2, Team 3, and other stuff like that. So it was kind of a competition between the class then, right? Yeah, it was a competition between the College of Science and the College of Engineering for the Team 2 spot, and we got the exhibition team. Well, that's good. Well, we can't wait to see you exhibit this nice buggy. Is there anything we need to know about it? Um, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just watch it run. Is there anything unique about it that we need to know? Um, we're actually using handlebars off of a 70s dirt bike. Wow. Probably my dirt bike from the 70s, Bill. This UA Huntsville. <laughs> back to you. All right. Thanks very much, Lori. You see that Team Italy is now about to crest the hill, headed back down towards the, uh, the Pathfinder space shuttle. All right. All right. Approaching obstacle number 14. And able to make it over with a little difficulty, but not too much. I now headed on the backside towards obstacle number 15 there at the bottom of the hill before they'll take that left-hand turn around the north side of the shuttle. University of Alabama in Huntsville is sitting there at the starting gate. This will actually be their third team of the race, but this team is different as it's just an exhibition team. They will not be eligible to win anything, but I think this is more like a, a, a test buggy. They want to make sure that maybe this one uh, could be considered for, for racing in the future. And uh, from what we were able to hear from our brief interview with Lori, the, uh, a few different schools wanted to represent UAH, so they had to have their own private competition in order to their own private competition in order to see who was going to represent the school. There's Team Italy coming down towards the finish line. Uh, they were easily able to finish under the 10 minute time limit. That is some good news. Timer ready? 